What's happening, everybody? It's your resident super villain, Mr. Jay Washington here. And I'm excited to talk to these men because two of them have created some of the most hilarious cartoons we've seen on TV. One man I've been a fan of since back in Oz. Y'all might know the wire. I remember from Oz. I go far back. I'm honored to be talking to the incredible, legendary Lance Reddick and the two creators of the upcoming Netflix show, Farzar. Rush, <laughs> man, this is just crazy to me. Roger Black and Wacko O'Gween. Wacko O'Gween, how are you <laughs> fellas, man? Good, man. Thanks for having us. Dude, yeah, this is like, first of all, Brickleberry was hilarious. Paradise PD, y'all just said, we ain't got no filter no more. We gonna do what we do. <laughs> and then I started watching Farzo and I was like, oh, they just were like, the gloves are off. And Lance, like I said, I've been a fan <laughs> I you you pop up either in something I'm watching or I hear your voice in something. So it's always you're always around every form of entertainment. And I know that this relationship with the three of you all came to be working together on Paradise PD. So how did the idea? I'll go first to you, Roger and Waco. How did the idea to bring Lance over to Farzar as Renzo, which is that's another thing we'll get into in a second. How did that come to be? Well, when we started writing the pilot, it was just Lance's voice in our, in our heads as we were doing the dialogue. Mm. And, and then we just said, we have to get Lance. We had to figure out how to make this work because I don't <laughs> think anybody else is going to fit now that it's clicked. And we've been writing to the character, to Lance as a character. It would have been heartbreaking to have to uh, kind of reimagine him at that point. And, and thank goodness, Lance. We had some dirty pictures and stuff of Lance. So he <laughs> <laughs> so this is all blackmail is what you're saying. I got it. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> That's... Yeah, we're very happy it worked out. Oh, man. Yeah, Waco was a huge fan of The Wire, and we're both huge fans of Destiny, which he does a voice in. Yeah. You know, Commander Zavala. And, oh, man, we're like, because he's got the, you know, the, the range as an actor on screen. Um, and we brought that into Farzar where he could, you know, be sincere with his son a little bit, you know, and have that heartfelt moment. But then also in that stern, intense tone, say the most ridiculous shit you've ever heard come out of Lance Reddick's mouth. <laughs> That's what I was about to ask, because having watched the first three episodes, Lance, I was like, yo, wait, hold on. Wait, this the same dude? Like, it feels like you got the freedom to do something you... I've heard you talk about how being an artist and everything you've done in your work, like this gave you the creative freedom to just, create a freedom to just play around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I was fortunate enough that I had a, a, I, I, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but I, I did a show for three seasons called Corporate, which mm -hmm. I actually did while I was shooting Bosch. And I played the CEO of a multinational corporation who's, who's, who's pretty much a maniac. So I, I was, so I had a little practice before Renzo came. But then Renzo's, you know, get, literally king of the world. <laughs> First of all, let me just say, for those who have yet, who will see this interview and have yet to see Farzar, when you see Renzo, it is a black dude who looks like Lionel's daddy from the Thundercats with the most <laughs> blondest of hair. And then you hear that it's Lance Red, and you're like, wait, what? And the relationship with Feichel's mom, how it's just the oldest of old with again. <laughs> Let me ask you, Roger Waco, well, how much drinking was done the night before Booyah came up with that character? Because, like, that is not just a random character. You could, like, again, I've seen Brickleberry. I've seen Paradise PD. And you're like, no, nah, he's going to be with the oldest of old women who never has an idea of anything. <laughs> I think we wanted Renzo to be obvious that he craves power so much, he's willing to do anything or anyone to get <laughs> Literally, he wants. Literally, <laughs> like yeah. well, he's going to do anyone, anyone he can <laughs> to get what he wants. I, I just, so Renzo said, "Well, hey, she ain't got no teeth, so that'd be good for something." I know right? <laughs> it was what is what see. She's like she putting him on punishment from sex, and he was like, "Oh no, please no." <laughs> that's the other thing that's funny about Renzo. He's constantly trying to get out of having sex with her. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, oh yeah. Lance, he, gets this creative. Is, he gets very creative in getting out of having sex with Flammy in the man, further episodes. <laughs> I've seen some, like when I seen the three, I was like, oh, you just gonna say, oh, she's going to Costco. And then where she goes, you're like, oh, that's just petty. <laughs> and I love it. I'm here for the petty. <laughs> Again, I think the question for you, Roger and Winko, has been asked so many times, and I feel like I have to reiterate it. 
the inspiration for these characters, where did that come from? Again, I, you guys, is it because you've already gone to such a level with Brickleberry and Paradise PD, you've wanted to figure how far, again, how far out of the box can we go? Go ahead, Roger. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've always wanted to do sci-fi. Like, you know, we grew up on Trek and Star Wars and, you know, we watched He-Man religiously as a kid. We had all the toys. And now we get to do some world building and characters, you know, kind of an homage that we get to kind of plan our own little toy box, you know, with all these characters and just take them to the next level, the most crazy levels and come up with a, a good, solid, like family story, like with uh, Fikel and Renzo and also kind of a workplace kind of ensemble with, you know, the chat squad and everything. So it was just a fun, fun world that we've always wanted to, to, to be in. And we're really happy at how that turned out. And we know if we don't bring it, our fans will re reject it. So we, yes. we had to bring it for them because that's what they expect from us. At Lance, were you guys in the, in the book? I'm assuming you guys fit, take, did all the recording and the audio during the height of COVID. So you guys probably were in booths different days and never together, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, most, most of the voiceover stuff I've done, uh, I think I've only ever done one project where I actually recorded with other people while I was doing uh, voice. Mm -hmm. uh, was it, there was a, a very short lived series called uh, uh, Beware the Batman. Um, yes. So, were you a Raz Al Ghul in that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was great. I mean, that was that was, I got to play a, one of the most iconic villains of all time. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so much of this was shot last year, and I was actually in South Africa shooting shooting Resident Evil at the time. So um, yeah, I would go into a studio with the with the mask on and do my lines and yeah, do something else and then come back and do some more episodes. Yeah. Because that's the beauty of the the show, especially with animation. Yes, it, everyone's done individually, but it sounds as if you all are together because oh, yeah, of the way everything amazing. flows. Yeah, yeah. That's a miracle of editing. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of the great things. Uh, Lance, I, like, you just brought up playing Bat, playing Ra's al Ghul, and then and now the Batman podcast, you're Thomas Wayne. You're a giant oh, Batman fan. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, bro. I know. I, I, I got you. Don't worry about it. I got you. <laughs> so I, what I'm saying is, are you going to try to get Waco and Roger to give you the role of Batman in something eventually? I like that. Oh, yeah. what's he doing here? I mean, a black Batman. <laughs> I'm already yeah. black He-Man. So I might as well be black Batman. <laughs> <laughs> he's He-Man with the giant. He's He-Man if he had an ego on Eternia. Like, that's oh, what yeah, Renzo yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. I, I, None of this altruism stuff. No. <laughs> it's just amazing again like i said watching this man was skeletor and black and cool <laughs> that's <hilarious>. <laughs> <laughs> who would you guys say now again i know that lance is here roger waco and this even this, this question is posed to you as well lance out of all the characters in the series aside your own lance who would you say is one of your favorite characters so far throughout the series bazarak i mean when i read it bazarak was my favorite character I was like, oh man, I wish I could do Bazarak. <laughs> but He's then when I saw feeling him, that you're like, wait, how is he the bad guy? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Waco? I mean, yeah, yeah. Of course, Renzo is the tops, but outside of Renzo, probably Bazarak. He's just so much fun, and Dana brings so much, and you you almost feel bad for him. He's so insecure and just needs love so much. It's really all he wants. He doesn't really want to take over the city. He just wants people to love him, you know. He's yeah. so punked out as the leader, too. Like, they punk him out so much, and you're like, ain't this the dude supposed to be in charge? But, Roger, go ahead. Oh, man, I feel like I got to say something different uh, since these two guys. But, yeah, I mean, I've always, like, rooted for the villain. Like, even, like, Darth Vader and stuff like that. Like, you know, you know they're bad. You know they're evil. But, you know, there's that little part of you, like, oh, shit, you know. You you got you got to love him because he's got he's so inept and he's so funny like you want you feel like a guy needs a break at least once you know <laughs> let him let him conquer part of the city or something you know? I, or, yeah, or you, at least that's what we put on a musical <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. felt bad for him I was like yo like is, is this because then you like there's a twist I won't tell you guys about you find out and you're like wait what am I supposed to feel sorry for him now but then you're like nah I don't know if I should later. I have to ask about another character real quick from the three of you all to get your thoughts. Billy. Billy is just its own <laughs> thing because... 
<laughs> he has with you. So I wasn't sure. I had forgotten about Billy. And then when I saw him, I was like, oh, that's a little, <laughs> oh, wow. And he's doing that. He, what's he doing? Oh, he's right. Right. He's, 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 oh, oh, he's, he's relieving himself. Okay. Uh, wow. I mean, he just be out there just going, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> How? How? Just answer that question. How? Nobody, nobody taught him not to. We'd all be doing the same thing right now, but we were taught better. <laughs> <laughs> Barry's not a good dad to Billy. He didn't teach him. And what was, again, I, I'm going to ask, the inspiration for Billy, because first of all, he's a, a hodgepodge monstrosity, and then... Yeah. What he does, which people will see, but how? Where, <laughs> how do you come up with that? I, I feel like I want to blame you, Roger, because you're sitting back there so quiet, like this is my brain, child. <laughs> I, I think, uh, no, actually, I think Waco kind of started to draw like animals, like we were trying to think it's of just, an alien, and then I, he started I, I, putting. Waco. <laughs> he's probably putting a he was putting a trunk, you know, with a, with a beak, and, and we're like, oh shit, that could be a character right there, you know. So. Yeah. It, it, and then he be- became kind of like a sympathetic thing, like, oh man, look at this, look at this fucking mess. Like yeah. like John Merrick the elephant man or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, I what? think once we came up with Barry, then Billy came along because we we're yeah. like, what kind of weird shit is Barry making? Is it maybe he made somebody that could be on the chat squad? It's like the worst possible candidate. And Barry and Barry is just as terrible, like again. <laughs> I, one of the things I will bring up because seeing Barry and then this brings me back to the trailer because one of the things you guys acknowledged in the trailer out the gate for people to see in the first episode is, is this going to be like other adult animation? Will this be like Rick and Morty, all these different things? And it's just like a shut the, you know, what made you guys want to get that out the way that quick? So we knew that's what everybody, every moron on YouTube comments is going to say, just like, you know. And, and just taking that from a trailer, you can't tell what the show is from a trailer, from a two minute trailer, you know, but, yeah. you know, like Roger says, people compare Family Guy to The Simpsons. Everything gets compared. Every new show always gets compared. So we were just saying it before they said it, you know, before they could, you know, before they could type it in real fast. Oh, oh, yeah. well, Rizzo said it before they said it. Right. Rizzo, <laughs> right. Rizzo says it like, <laughs> shut up. Just, and to kids on top of it. I was like, well, you know what? Okay. <laughs> Roger, you were about to say? No, no, no. That uh, Rizzo said it perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, let me get ready to wrap this up with you guys. In a final word, and I'll start with you first, Roger, Roger then I'll go to Waco, then I'll go to Lance. Tell people why they should watch this show real quick, Roger. Oh, it's just a, it's just a great universe. It's a gr- lot of jokes. Great story arc. Very bingeable. Watch them all 10 at, in one sitting if you can. That, you know, bring a, bring a jug, the PN, whatever you got to do. <laughs> <Watch them all. laughs> Waco? I can't top that, but if you like if you like Brickleberry in Paradise PD, you're gonna love this show. And Lance, uh, uh, you, you gonna laugh your ass off? Watch, and, and, <laughs> but don't worry. I mean, don't listen, to Roger. You don't have to bring anything to pin. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> you on streaming. You know, run the bathroom and come back. <laughs> I think that's the only way we can end this again. Make sure you check out Far Out when it drops on Netflix. Roger Black, Waco Queen, and Lance Reddy. Thank you guys so much for your time. You guys have a great one. It's been an honor to talk to y'all. Take care. Thank Thank you so much. Thank you.